Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and show off the fabric box build I ended up making for the competition. This probably can't be copied because of the location and all the NFTs I used, but if anything you can always refer to this for inspiration or just to help you get an idea of what the layout may look like for this type of craft. The competition for this meta did end already, I just took a recording of the build before it ended so I can make a video on it now. I had to work all day so I didn't have the time to do it before it ended. Uh, but here's what I got, a uh, beautiful four river edge, plains biome location. Needless to say I had great luck this time overall with the land rush and no game crash issues. Uh, only one minor setback during the whole competition and that was one of the days I forgot to reapply all my skins so some of my skins were not applied. <laughs> I hate how it does that from time to time, but yeah, always a good reminder to double check on your skins anytime you refresh your game, because sometimes it just randomly unapplies the skins. Um, so this build did on average 34 fabric boxes per hour, with a peak at 35 per hour at some point, and it was enough to keep me in the top 100. I ended up placing in 92nd place when it ended, which is amazing honestly. I was aiming for top 200 and I did even better and got to top 100. This competition went surprisingly well and yeah it was fun to do, more fun than the Sangria one and that one was great too in my opinion. So just to run down on this build, it's a 4 river edge so I have a great amount of passive water on all sides. You see even my loggers and tractors have passive water. <laughs> That's how much water I got in here. Um, still, I use my legendary water tower and uh, OK fountain to make sure I have all the water I need for my sheep pens and trees. And I only had to pit, uh, build two ponds in the industrial area to have uh, water pumps connected to them. I only needed three power plants to supply me with all the energy I needed in the area. I had 27 fabric plants in total, 15 making cotton yarn, 6 making wool yarn, 4 making uniforms, and 2 making fabric boxes. There was 5 lumber mills in total, 4 to the left making lumber, and the 1 to the right making wooden boxes. I overproduced wooden boxes over time, and it was somewhat of a waste of lumber, but it was fine. I took advantage of the legendary lumber storage NFT, placing it down in the center of my industrial area, as I thought it was the most balanced way to control my production. I used the dragon to sell in batches of 25, and so I had 5 warehouses total because I needed the extra storage to accommodate it. Also, this location is perfect with a dragon. I suppose it's still a great location with a trade beer, since it's not too far from the city. Uh, in case you're wondering where the spot is, it's somewhere in the uh, northeastern part of the United States, or north central part. It's where the big body of rivers is at. Um, I used a orb of hope NFT that allows me to have my potteries close to the power plant uh, for the passive energy without being harmed by the pollution effect. And I ran two potteries, two clay fields, two beehives, one beekeeper, and two meadows to allow me to operate just fine with the rate I was making. I slowly overproduced ceramic bowls and wax this way, but it wasn't an issue. For my wool setup, this looked so much better at the beginning when I was doing my wool rush and it ended up looking like this weird mess. Uh, but this setup right here took a lot of tweaking and it ended up running about 525 wool per hour, which is pretty amazing just for that amount of sheep. And uh, I had almost double this amount of sheep pens during the start and I was pushing close to 700 wool per hour. That was actually not as efficient as just running this. But yeah, I ended up 
at uh, 22 sheep pens and 23 feed mills. I am taking advantage of using my legendary wheat stand to have all the feed mills making feed. And in addition to 5 ATVs, I also place my 10 feed bots to help me collect and store the feed. Feed bots are such an amazing help. I basically do this wool rush in every build, but in this, this is the one build where I actually have all my feed bots on the map in the end build. Uh, let's see, it was 19 loggers and 8 tractors used for all the wood and cotton gathering and I ended with 34 trees and 13 cotton fields so yeah that's the whole layout it worked great didn't get stuck on anything not sure what I could have improved to make it better but I was already more than pleased with how it was doing so yeah uh, I hope everyone had fun with the competition I understand some people get frustrated with the land rush and although it goes well for me or you or others sometimes, personally I feel like they should just get rid of it and let everyone have the same lay layout or choose from a handful of layouts that the players can decide what they want to work with. Like hey if you want to do this competition with a mountain edge instead of a river then go for it you know, uh, something like that. I'm sure they'll come up with something that will make it fair over time. Well, feel free to like the video and leave a comment if you wish. And as Mal said in the most recent Townstar discussion, start practicing those baguette builds because they'll likely tie into the meta for the next NFT competition. So yeah, I'll be practicing that on my day off. Uh, hopefully we'll hear more info about this uh, during the next couple of days. Alrighty then, thank you for watching.